going to take the stage, the true speaker of the night. Thank you. It's interesting how such a seemingly small thing like this story that I read, Teddy by J.D. Salinger, can have a really long-lasting impact. And I built my sort of life philosophy, a lot of that at least, from the ideas that he speaks about. The story takes place on a cruise ship and opens up to Teddy looking out of a port window. And some guy throws some garbage can full of orange peels out the window. They float very nicely, he says. That's interesting. I don't mean it's interesting that they float. It's interesting that I know about them being there. If I hadn't seen them, then I wouldn't know they were there. And if I didn't know they were there, I wouldn't be able to say that they even exist. These orange peels are nothing more than an organic bits of orange matter just floating on this vast, endless ocean. Some of them are starting to sink now, he says. In a few minutes, the only place they'll still be floating will be inside my mind. That's quite interesting. Because if you look at it a certain way, that's where they started floating in the first place. If I'd never been standing here at all, or if somebody had come along and sort of chopped off my head right while I was, after I go out this door, I may only exist in the minds of my acquaintances, he says. I may be an orange man. Now, this idea stuck with me, this power that memory has, what memory is, the fact that inside our minds there's this whole other world. I'm just going to take a little pause and let this thing that he said settle in, because it needs to make a personal connection, I think, to really be understood. You see, this is a lens through which to look at the world. It's not necessarily an idea. And for me, this lens has become more and more prominent the more I look through it. When we're asleep, our bodies aren't moving, for the most part. But in our minds, we're usually doing all these actions, and these actions are basically the same in our, as our minds as if we were actually doing them. Now, the same would apply for memories and such things. Inside our mind, those actions that we are doing, those actions that we are remembering, they, our body goes to very similar feelings in that way. Thinking is very similar to actually doing. Now, I really love science. I love the whole process of discovery, but this sort of lens gives it another meaning. The fact that you're building on the memory of all these other scientists standing on the shoulders of the giants, expanding science, expanding knowledge, and all those things off of these discoveries and off the memory of these people. Now, language is equally impressive, how you're implanting thoughts in other people's minds, how you are creating whatever comes out and goes on in your mind, you're recreating in theirs through the language that you choose to use. Novels, the authors are creating new worlds. They're creating these beautiful struck things and then they write them down on paper and it goes into your mind. Nonfiction stories from the past where people recount memories and make them real as if they were there in the time before. Now, just gonna, sorry if this hits anyone, it's a little foam ball. You guys should all remember me a little bit better because I just threw a random ball on your face. Hopefully, no one got hit by that. I actually see where it went, sorry. <laughs> anyway, um, and the last note, for those that pass, people always say to you, they'll still be in your heart. They will still be in your mind. And this is more literal than you may imagine. Because any, th any actions that they had, any impact they had on your lives, those impacts are still there. They're still there in your mind, the world that is located within your mind, everything you thought, that's still there. Now, in 1984 by George Orwell, the party and Big Brother are immortal because people are manipulated to thinking about them. You can keep people alive together from your own free will just by remembering.